There was the time President Trump blurted out highly classified code word level intelligence to Russian diplomats in the Oval Office. There was the time his national security advisor was allowed to hang around in that job for 18 long days after the White House was warned that Mike Flynn was vulnerable to blackmail by the Russian government. There was the time the president discussed North Korean missile launches with the Japanese prime minister during dinner on the terrace at Mar-a-Lago while paying guests looked on and took pictures and posted them to their Facebook pages. Handling classified information has not been a strong suit for this White House. Now we have a new whistleblower who says at least 25 times career staffers raised serious red flags about applications for security clearances, including applications for very senior White House officials. Career security staffers noticed those red flags, raised concerns, said an application for security clearance should be denied, but those rulings were ignored uh, and overridden by the White House. We know that's the situation we're in right now. But imagine you're running for president. Imagine you're going to be the next president who has to follow in the footsteps of that. With that issue, as with so many other things from the Trump administration, how do you cram that genie back into the bottle? I mean, security clearances are a presidential prerogative. How do you go back and reestablish norms after processes like that have been broken as badly as they have by this president? Back with us now is former HUD Secretary Julian Castro, who is now running in the Democratic presidential primary. Mr. Secretary, thank you again. Great to be here. On that security clearance issue, um, uh, I don't know much about your national security background and the your relative hawkishness on these sorts of issues, but I do want to just get your response um, to this current controversy that's happening, this standoff that's happening now between Democrats in Congress who are upset about the way that Trump administration's handling national security and classified information, and the Trump administration, its defenders, who are sort of saying this is, this is no big deal. Uh, it's ironic, uh, based on how he ran his campaign, um, you know, uh, slandering Hillary Clinton, uh, about her emails, her emails, uh, and this administration has been the sloppiest, and that's a generous term, the sloppiest administration when it comes to handling classified information and, and these issues related to national security. Uh, my hope is that, uh, that Congress will continue to assert its authority and get a hold of documents to investigate exactly what has happened in terms of the White House uh, basically overruling the career staff that has made recommendations on whether certain individuals should get a security clearance or not. You mentioned you know, understanding what the norms were before uh, this administration busted through all these norms. That's important. Mm -hmm. I think not just with regard to these security clearances, this process, but a whole bunch of other um, you know, processes within the federal government. Uh, I also see that as one of the reasons um, that uh, you know, I, I have, I'm well prepared for this office because I was there before. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to see an administration that was actually doing th these things in the right way. Uh, and we need to get back to that. We're starting to see another standoff take shape between the congressional Democrats and the administration, particularly the Department of Justice, as to whether or not the Mueller report is going to be released to Congress or to the public and in what form. How hard do you think Democrats should push on that if, if in fact, push comes to shove? The American people are with the Democrats on this. Poll after poll has showed that uh, people want to see the full report. They know that we're not going to know the full truth until we see the full report. Um, you know, they, they won't even say how many pages exactly this report is, mm -hmm. but they summarize it only with four pages, probably for hundreds of pages worth of a, a report. Um, so uh, Democrats should keep pushing on that. There's no reason that they should let up on that. And uh, sometimes this issue comes up where people ask, well, do uh, the folks out on the trail in Iowa or New Hampshire or wherever, do they ask you about the Mueller report? You know, it comes up every now and then. But what people do ask about is accountability in government. Hmm. They want integrity, honesty, and accountability in government. And fundamentally, that's what this issue is about. You unveiled your own immigration proposal today, which is the first in the field from all the Democratic candidates, a comprehensive proposal. You're talking about the prospect of putting people first, putting compassion back at the center of the way that we deal with immigration. I feel like on immigration policy, since the early days of the Bush administration, there's been this kind of want, want, pointless talking point about comprehensive immigration reform that never has motivating force behind it because there's so much disingenuous politicking on the issue. Do you feel like you can transcend what has become a, not just partisan standoff here, but it's what feels like a cul-de-sac where no real and substantive policy ever gets developed? 
Uh, I believe so. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do with the People First immigration plan that I put out today. Basically, Rachel, you know, those folks that saw it today, I hope that they'll go to julianforthefuture.com and look it up. I also had a Medium post. Um, I'm not buying into the BS hmm. that basically says that little children and mothers who are desperate and fleeing desperate circumstances are a national security threat to our nation. Uh, I said that we should decriminalize uh, people who are coming here crossing the border. We should go back to treating this the way that we did basically before 2004 as a civil matter. Uh, we need to end detention. I don't think we should be putting people in cages. Uh, we need to increase the number of refugees that we take into this country. Uh, you know, this is somewhat politically incorrect to say, I think, for people on the right, but we need uh, a lot of these immigrants. Uh, you know, several of the industries in this country uh, benefit already from their labor. Our, un our unemployment rate right now is 3.8, 3.9%, right? And even at that, in a lot of these industries, they can't find the labor that they need. We see countries around the world that have an aging population. The United States birth rate is declining. We have an aging population. We have baby boomers that are turning 65 and drawing down more and more on Social Security. We need a young and vibrant workforce. And if we're not careful, if we don't get this right, uh, in 20 or 30 years, this nation is going to be begging for immigrants to come mm. to this country. Uh, we, have, we are a great nation. We have people that are fleeing danger. And the president wants us to believe that we have to choose between uh, border security and compassion. I believe that our border is more secure than it's ever been, and we can continue to make investments so that it stays secure. But I want us to choose compassion, not cruelty. Julian Castro, former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Can you stick with us for just one more segment? I have another thing I'm going to ask you about that you are not going to want to answer. <laughs> we'll be right back with Julian Castro right after this. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.